My best friend and my mum laugh at me because I went through a phase of texting them every time I did a poo. <laughs> and they were like, why are you telling me? And I was like, look, if something happened, at least I've got a track record of like when I last went. So like, yeah. I know that it's you guys that are getting it, but like, I'm, I'm doing this for myself. I love that though. That's brilliant. Like normalizing again, like it's crazy because, um, Obviously, I run an online platform, B is for Bladder. It's a community for those that struggle with, with bladder illness in particular. But um, we see so much more out there for bowel now. Uh, yeah. Yes, it's still probably not spoken about as much as it needs to be. But they always say there's like a taboo around poo. And I'm like, I see so many people online talking about their colostomy bags and bowel. But I yeah. rarely see, or not as many, talk about bladder. And it's crazy. It's like there's a bigger taboo around we than there is poo these days. I don't get it. So I'm here to break all that with what I'm doing. I'm trying to like, you know, change the narrative and um, yeah, let's talk about our toilet habits, poo or wee, either way, let's let's keep it in, in the conversation. It's important. And I also think as women particularly, because when we need to go, we need to go. We yeah. don't have that ability because it's obviously like guys have a bit different, but with females particularly, like it must, it's such a difficult like area to navigate because I've been in so many situations where I've been like oh my gosh if I don't go now I'm gonna wee myself like it's gonna happen and like it's gonna happen in front of a load of people and I need to run and the amount of times that I've had to like sprint to a toilet is absolutely ridiculous and the fact that we don't have these conversations sometimes is absolutely wild yeah I agree I totally agree it's 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 crazy um and also I think that like with me sort of having, I've got a super pubic catheter now, so it comes out of my stomach. There's an indwelling catheter that stays there all the mm-hmm. time. So I don't have to catheterize urethrally because that's where the issue lies is my urethral muscles too yeah. tight. Um, and I have like leaks often. So like I'll be at work, I'm a primary school teacher and I'll be at work and I'll just have like a major leak in the classroom. And it's like, oh, so I've tried to really normalize it on that level with kids yeah. as well. To sort of say, oh, Miss Madden's bladder's leaked. And she just got to go and change it. Her time, yeah. sort of, you know? <laughs> because I think that, again, if, if we kind of normalize it from, from a child level, or, you know, at, from that age, if we start yeah. normalizing that chat then they're going to grow up aren't they you know as adults who think you know what not everyone's the same and that's okay yes very much this I always think that when we start to talk about disability like when I look back when I was at school there was absolutely no conversation around disability there was no conversation about anything that was out of the ordinary it was men and men women are women women have blonde hair and blue eyes and work in the kitchen and men do like some form of banking job now obviously times have changed an awful lot since then and they have changed you know so drastically but actually like disability was never mentioned and I was a disabled child like I was born with my disability so someone should have been like just to let you know like you are different and that's okay but you're still perfect you're still valid but that conversation was never had so I actually 110% agree with you and I think it's so fab as well that you know you're, you're making it normal for your students because I don't know what my life would have been like had I had a disabled teacher because I, yeah. I never I never saw that. So I didn't really know what was, you know, able for me. And yeah. it's so good that you're just being so upfront and so honest because I think the next generation need that. And like how like how good is that? Like how like how perfect is that to be able to make other people realize that if they're just a little bit different then it's completely fine because we're all actually freaks absolutely 100 percent, yeah and I mean my niece Caitlin she's hilarious because she loves obviously I'm close with her so she'd come into the bathroom with me let's say at my house whatever and it, I'm like right I'm gonna go for a wee now uh she thinks it's like an absolute superpower she's like can I watch can I watch because obviously I'm just getting a tube out and standing there I don't need to yeah. sit on the loo um so yeah and normalizing that level is just so so important we at B is the bladder on, on my online community we made um we made like a series of Barbie dolls with super pubic catheters. Oh, I love that. Yeah, because I was like, ha- imagine having a toy as a child that, you know, had, like you were saying, you were born with a disability. So imagine having a toy that represented you. Yeah. I mean, incredible. Yeah. I think that's so brilliant because I think, you know, Lego have just brought out their limb difference character. I think it's Autumn. I think that's the name. I'm pretty sure it is. Yeah, Someone I saw it. I'm like I walked I was walking um down Fifth Avenue in New York oh, listen to me I sound like such a globetrotter walking down Fifth <laughs> Avenue in New York. and I was walking by like I wasn't going into the Lego store but you walk past the Lego store 
and like, this massive giant character was there with a limb difference and I, I burst out crying and this was only like a month ago and I, I was literally there and I was like oh my goodness and this woman who they were queuing for something god knows what and this woman was like are you okay and I was like clearly not <laughs> <laughs> But it was the first time I'd ever seen a toy that looked like me. Yeah. And like how am I and like, you know, I'm not a child. Like I don't need toys in my life anymore. Well, you know, depends what type of toy it is, but <laughs> you know. But I don't need that. But imagine small version of me, like Little Brook, would have loved to have seen that and would have loved to have seen that she was on Fifth Avenue and that representation. So I think that that's like the most magical thing that you can do. Oh my gosh, 100%, definitely. Um, I really, really hope that, you know, that carries on as well. Because I think it's great that companies like Lego are jumping into that. But like mm. a lot of stuff I see online, there's a woman that makes bears and she'll like mm. do like a teddy bear with a colostomy bag or a teddy bear with catheters. She does them now. Yeah. Um, a teddy bear with, you know, lines in for pe- children who are having sort of treatment IV often yeah. and a line in the teddy bear. Um, and I think that that's great, but like we want mainstream companies like Lego, yeah. which is brilliant, to jump on because we don't want to think we've got to go to a special woman to have our special toy made. Yeah, Do you know? exactly that. Exactly you're that. You're put into a box again, aren't you? Then rather than it being sort of normalized, normalized. Yeah, yeah. Hey! Hey!